Hi, this is Brian Oliva at Gethsemane Music. Last October, we tried to do a video to highlight a hidden calibration routine on the Moog One that did a deep tuning exercise that would uh, solve all the tuning issues that the Moog One has been noted for for some people. But we kept running into a technical issue, and after numerous attempts, it would always kind of slow to a stop and then die out in the middle of step 6 of 33. So we never were able to finish it. And I did reach out to Moog Tech Support uh, through an email through their website. But uh, even to this date, they've never responded. So I was kind of left hanging on my own. Uh, the only thing I could think of when I was going through the initial test is that there are cables plugged into the back of the Moog 1 that connect the, uh, the sub-outs to the uh, instrument ends. And I believe the Moog 1 uses that kind of to talk to itself to uh, complete the calibration routine. And the cables I were using were very short uh, cables with uh, with a right angle connector at the end. And I was concerned, because it's kind of crowded back there, that uh, perhaps they weren't quite making a, a solid connection. So uh, I just kind of thought about that for a few months, and then recently I decided I got access to some new straight cables and decided to plug those in and give it a shot. And, uh, much to my surprise, it actually completed. And, uh, I've done it twice now to, uh, make sure it wasn't a fluke. And it did complete satisfactorily both times. So, those cables are important to getting the test to complete properly. And, uh, I would highly suggest using straight cables versus, uh, right angle cables because, uh, there's just less, in less interference that way and, uh, you've got a better chance of making sure they're plugged all the way in correctly. So uh, with that said, uh, we'll continue with the test, kind of pick up where we left off and see if we get all the way through it this time. The original intent of this video is to provide a detailed in-depth tutorial on how to run a special calibration routine for the Moog One that's hidden in the settings menu, beginning with firmware update 1.4.0. As you're probably well aware, many Moog Ones experience tuning issues, especially in the lower octaves. Significant improvements were made through earlier firmware updates, and a very elaborate tuning compensation routine was introduced in 1.4.0 that maps out how much out of tune each oscillator is for every note possible, and tries to adjust for that on the fly, every time a note is pressed. But for some, that created new problems, because if a note was really out of tune, you could hear the note slide to the correct value. It also can create issues with wave cancellation, which was recently covered in an excellent video by Tim Shoebridge, so I won't dwell on any of that. For those lucky enough to have been able to get through to Moog Tech Support regarding their tuning issues, it was revealed that there's an actual calibration routine embedded in 1.4.0, but since it's likely a beta version, it does not appear in the settings menu unless you know the secret key combination to make it appear. It was anticipated that the final version of that would be included in the next firmware update for everyone to be able to access easily. But now it's been 16 months since that last firmware update, and for whatever reason, Moog has yet to offer up anything new, which for me is a very uncharacteristic thing for them. So even though my Moog 1 has been pretty well behaved, I decided it was time to do a tutorial to show you how to run the routine if you're having issues. First, according to Moog's tech support, this calibration should only be performed at the direction of Moog service. They want you to allocate at least four hours for the duration of the procedure. In user experience, eight hours might be more appropriate. But you don't have to watch it, so maybe your best bet is to set it up just before you go to bed and take it from there. Make sure your Moog one has been turned on for at least 45 minutes to an hour. And also make sure you're updated to the latest firmware update, 1.4.0. Otherwise, you won't find this. The first step is to connect two quarter-inch audio cables. Doesn't matter if they're TS or TRS. And you're going to connect them from the sub-outs left and right to the line-in and microphone line-in on the back of the unit. And it doesn't matter where the trim pot for the mic input is. Next, press Settings and go under Utilities to confirm that you're running the latest firmware, 
1.4.0. Once confirmed, just hit Settings again to back out. Now we're going to hold down the Shift key, the Settings key, and then tap the More button in the Polyphony section. That'll create a new item in the menu called Calibration. Select that, and then go under Voice Card Calibration. Confirm that Voices says All, Tuning is On, and Calibration's 17 of 17. Scroll down and select the Start. Press the encoder to begin the voice calibration. Then confirm that you want to run it by pressing the Run button, which is the last button at the top above the screen. The balance of this video is a time lapse showing the different sections as they go through. The first performing initial frequency measurements. It's the first of 33 steps. And that's complete. It waits for the temperature to settle in at the high setting. That's heating up the cards up over 62 degrees Celsius. Once they've stabilized, it runs the calibration test at high temperature. And then it goes and settles down to take low temperature tests. While it's doing that, the fans will kick in at full speed. So you might think it's going to take off, but that's just to bring the temperature down quicker. Step 5 runs the temperature calibration for the low temperature and eventually goes to step 6 which is performing the dense frequency measurements. This is probably the longest step in the entire procedure so make sure you give it enough time. As long as you see some of the panel lights blinking on the Moog 1 it's still doing something. If all the lights stop flashing after a significant period of time uh, then chances are it may have locked up like it was doing for me earlier. So the first thing I would check is that the cables are secure. You might want to just swap them out and try different ones in case they're not making a good connection. Step 7 calculates the tuning tables, then transfers the tuning data to the voice cards. Step 8 writes the tuning data to memory. Step 9 calibrates the oscillator 1, sawtooth, and triangle VCAs. Step 10 calculators the same for oscillator 2. And step 11 for oscillator 3. Step 12 calculates the oscillator 1 pulse VCA. 13 oscillator 2 pulse. And 14 oscillator 3 pulse. Step 15 calibrates the ring modulator VCA. Step 16 the noise VCA. Step 17 calibrates the external input VCA. Step 18 calibrates the ladder cutoff frequency. Step 19 calibrates the ladder VCA gain. Step 20 calibrates the ladder resonance. Step 21 calibrates ladder high pass. Step 22 calibrates ladder VCA bias. Step 23 calibrates the state variable filter VCA bias. Step 24 calibrates the SVF VCA gain. Step 25 calibrates the state variable filter, number 1. Step 26 does the same for number 2. Step 27 calibrates the main VCA. Step 28 calibrates the send for the VCA. Step 29 calibrates triangle min. And step 30, triangle max. 
Step 31, calibrate saw min. And 32, saw max. Finally, step 33 transfers all the calibration and tuning data to the voice cards. It's at this point you should power cycle your Moog 1. And uh, the last step should save the settings so that if you want to view the results, you could go back into that settings and calibration menu uh, the same way we got in before. Select voice card calibration calibration data and view results and you'd be able to see uh, whether each voice card passed or failed and if a specific card failed uh, you could then select that with the encoder and rerun the calibration just for that single voice card and uh, last but not least they remind you that uh, once a full voice card calibration has been performed, uh, you should run an oscillator compensation calibration again, uh, even if it was done beforehand, because uh, by tweaking all the oscillators, the previous results would no longer be valid, and you want to keep all that in sync if you're using it. So hopefully this video still has some value, uh, at least for no other reason. Uh, if it doesn't work for you, uh, don't panic. Just power cycle it and you should be right back where you were before. But if uh, you're really out of tune and this works for you, uh, following this procedure should help a lot. Anyway, keep pestering Moog. Still looking for uh, the next firmware update where this becomes more permanent and uh, a few more bugs get fixed. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.